So this is our viewpoints on Apiary from Stonemeyer Games. Welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Kevin. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jonah. And today, in this video, we are going to walk through our likes about Apiary. Our dislikes. Uh, we're going to talk about the theme just a little bit. We might even rank this game as opposed to some other Stone Myers game and talk about kind of where it falls on that overall category. And we'll give you anything else that we think you'd like about the game. But first, let's have an overview from Kevin. Apiary is a worker placement game for one to five players that takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. It's designed by Connie Vogelman, and the art is by Quan Chai Moria, published by Stonemeyer Games, who sent us this review copy. In the game, you have a faction of bees, and you'll send those bees to explore planets, gather resources, develop technologies, and create carvings to demonstrate your faction's strengths. The end of the game is triggered when the hibernation pods are full. Whoever has the most points will win. So I think we should probably start by talking about some areas that we liked about the game. Okay. All right, Kevin, you go first. I like worker placement games as a general rule, and I like the upgrading of the bees. I mean, making them go from one to two to three to four, and then having them hibernate, it makes sense thematic or not thematically, but logically it makes sense, and I enjoy that they, they get more powerful. And then trying to get those bees to four, because yeah. those areas on the board can activate um, like a super extra like bonus, that's really fun for me. So I liked the asymmetric player boards and the factions. So you have two of those things kind of combining together to make a lot of variability each time you play. Um, some of them may like really fit with your play style and then others, you know, you have to adapt to them. But I like that having to adapt and try new things with each game. And you're saying asymmetric on the factions and the boards? Yes. Like the combination mm -hmm. of those and how they all work? Yeah, I yeah. see that. Yeah, so I actually have to agree with both of you. I was going to talk about the factions. They're all unique, and I think that's really cool. But one of the things that I love most about many games, and Apiary is definitely one of those, is in-game bonuses. I'm a big <laughs> fan of in-game bonuses, There's and in carvings. this game, there's two different ways to do oh, it, yeah, really, yeah. right? Because you can get uh, the carvings, which are kind of like a tile, honeycomb style mm -hmm. because of the theme, right? Yeah. That's going to go on your planet. And then there's also cards. That's actually a little harder to get the in-game points off the cards mm -hmm. because you have to plant the cards as opposed to using them for their ability, and you can only plant them in really certain circumstances. So mm -hmm. I've been able to play the game a few times, and... I don't think I've ever even played the game where someone had more than two cards planted. Maybe not even more than one card planted. So it's a little tough to get that in-game points, but I really like the ability to do it. The last game I did two cards planted, uh, Jonah still beat me. Uh, he had an amazing carving. I that, did have a pretty good carving. It doubled your queen's bonus. Yeah, so there's a track on the bottom of the board that's called <laughs> the queen's favor track. Oh, yeah. Uh, and another player had a asymmetric faction that allowed any time that you bumped their bee off a of space that we would both move up the queen's yeah. favorite track and then i saved up all game to purchase this carving that Should've would bought it from you. that would give me the equivalent <laughs> amount of points to where i was in the queen's favor yeah. and i happened to be all the way at the end it so it was a, extra points it was a yeah 25 Without extra those points 25 was, points see Setting up the game, I know it's all like variable stuff. There's a lot of those carvings. I would have been like, mm, this bad factions in the game? We're not playing with that oh, carving. That's funny. That one's a... um, so you mentioned the cards, and I another thing that I like are multi use cards. Mm -hmm. And the cards in this game, you can either play them for their bonus, their. Like their ability. Yeah, an ability. Mm -hmm. Or you can use them as resources if you're ha having trouble getting resources. <clears throat> or you can plant them to yep. get those uh, end game points. So I like that there's three different ways that you can use the cards. I also enjoy worker placement games where you're not like filling up a spot and no one else can go there. And this one, Melissa, I think both of you mentioned the bumping mechanic. I really like that in this game because <clears throat> no spot is going to be filled. And you, it's not like you can't, you can't go there, which I, I appreciate. So um, definitely, definitely two thumbs up for me. I have one more like, unless you guys have another one. No, go for it. I like that there are way or well, a lot of different places to place your workers. And what I mean by that is a lot of worker placement games is like, I want to go get this resource. I want to get gold or silver or wood. So it's like, I need to go to the different spots to get the resources. Well, that's not apiary. 
you have one sort of spot that's sort of resource um, centric, and then you have another spot where you're converting resources, but the other places your workers are doing actions, getting cards, getting more workers, things like that. So I appreciate that APR is not just a worker to get resources sort of thing. It's, it's using your workers for a lot of different things. So the variety of types of mm -hmm. spots. Yes. Which sort of leads, leads into my dislikes a little bit. <laughs> cool. Let's do it. Let's talk about dislikes. So dislikes, because of all those, which I really enjoy, it could lead some people to AP, um, which is analysis paralysis. <laughs> Are you looking at me? <laughs> um, I think we, the last time Joan and I played at uh, the community game night, there was yeah. one guy, it was like, you could sort of see those wheels yeah. turning. Too and many like, options. Too, little, too many options. He was trying to figure out like what was his best, more yeah. efficient route. It could lead to lead players to like, oh, they get stuck a little bit, but really you're placing workers and you're getting stuff, and I appreciate that. So, yeah, I, dislike. I've played this several times. I think it was four players mm -hmm. each and time. We played I played five players there tonight. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Um, and I know sometimes I have a plan, and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. But then someone bumps a B mm. or it takes the spot, and a lot of the spaces you're adding the numbers together. <laughs> and so if those numbers change, yep. you have to change your plan. So. That was sometimes me having to <laughs> rework a plan that I had uh, already, you know, honed in on, and then had to change tactics when thing when the board state changed. Um, so sometimes for me that takes a little bit of extra time to rethink a plan. I need to have a backup plan going in. No. Yeah. So really, there's two things that I didn't like. The first one is in the resource conversion category. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the game, you have, when you're playing with four or five players, you have the ability to teach a dance, which is basically to set your own conversion table for the resources. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing with four or five players, there's the ability to convert three dances. Mm -hmm. And just like any other area, you have to get your B upgraded to a level four to be able to do that dance. But both games that I've played most recently, because of cards or special abilities, someone was able to, or actually all three dances were actually taught without someone upgrading to a four. And, that and it happened, yeah, and it happened in both recent games, mm -hmm. and I just thought to myself, oh, I was on the good end, the, the, the positive end this last time, but the first game I was not. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I was working really hard to actually upgrade my B and get there, and you guys just happened to pull the right card and just did it. Yeah. And, and so I didn't love that about the game. The other thing that I didn't like very much, so it actually is like, I do like this, but I <laughs> didn't <laughs> like it at the same time, which is these cards that you can get in the game are actually really helpful and I'm with really you. I know powerful. Where going. I'm with you. But I don't like that you can play as many of them as you want on your turn. <laughs> Like if someone, and especially if someone is accumulating cards because of their faction or because of where they're playing. The conversion table, you could get like... Yeah, the conversion card, table because card. someone set the conversion and yeah. all of a sudden you're getting yeah. all these cards. They're getting cards and you're not getting cards and then they can just play them and play them and play them and play them and play them. And, play them. <laughs> and you can almost see it coming from really early in the game like... Yeah we are not going to win. Like, they have so many yeah. more abilities and so many more options. And like yeah. Melissa said, you can trade them in for resources, and it's like, oh, no. So uh, it hasn't been super overwhelming in any game that I've played, but, I, but it could easily be. Like, if you played this game, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight times in a row, you'd have some games in there where you just got blown out by somebody who was just using cards as mm -hmm. fast as they could. So Yeah, I think that may lend to like the feeling of a game because sometimes you feel like something's overpowered or you feel like people are doing more at the end you know your scores are pretty similar but in that moment yep. you feel like wow they're doing so much and all i did was yeah get a honey or mm -hmm. do this so i've got to agree with melissa because there is a faction or two that we've played with that i thought to myself what this faction's <laughs> power is way better than yeah. mine and that faction did not win yeah. So, I agree. <clears throat> I agree. The other thing with cards are they're not all created equal. So, and what I mean is some of them are just like, do like this one thing, and some of them are like, get an extra 15 points. It just seemed like they weren't. So, sometimes people are digging through the deck looking for certain cards, but those other cards are helpful mm -hmm. in like a, a little a little bit, but not as good as some of those yeah. other ones. Yeah, and I think one of those conversions you can do is trade cards for cards. So, I think the game is kind of 
clue in you in I there. I did that last, that, last game. I'd use that. Hey, ability. there are some cards that are going to really fit your strategy or the end game points or the actual action is really going to help you. Yeah. So here's a way to try to do that. Yeah. All right. We're moving on a theme. Let's do it. Let's talk theme. You want me to go first? Go for it. Okay, so it's going to sound a little bit harsh. I'm going to be kind. I really am. But I just don't think the theme... It's not that the theme doesn't fit the game. I just think the theme is weird. <laughs> that, that That's it. I, I mean, the theme is... Right? The theme is people haven't been on Earth in a really long time. Right, and right. now bees... <clears throat> are sentient. Are, yeah, are taking over. It's just weird. I just think it could have been... It's a really cool game. It's a good work I think it could have been a bee game. Yeah. Without space. Yeah, right. There you go. That's what I'm thinking. Honestly, I think you could pretty much do that bees are getting the resources, the bees are getting actions, right. the bees are... They're honeycomb. It could have been a honeycomb. Yeah. Instead of a planet. Or yeah. no, there was a ship. There was a ship. Oh, a ship. That they were, but it could have been a honeycomb. Yeah. I mean, the tiles that you're placing on yeah. your... Anyway. So, so anyway, I agree with Kevin. Yeah, bees, cool. Bees in space. What? But, but the game's good, so okay. Yeah, I'm definitely a mechanics first, theme second, so it doesn't really bother me. It's not like, oh, wow, this theme is drawing me in, but it's also not pushing me away yeah. either. And I do like the actual bees that you turn yeah, and yeah, but, change their number, but that, and that's that cool. thematic? I mean, I mean, they're cool bee meeples. The queen bee's cool, sitting up on the stand. It's That's cool, yeah. but the whole theme of bees in space is just kind of like, okay, <laughs> sounds good, let's the, play the it. queen bee could have gone to different flowers to collect the resources. Right. It just seems like bees would have done just fine. You know, maybe they just they're just trying to yeah make anyway. it a little different. Well, but, you do have all those technology tiles, so that would have had to be changed. They could have been else. smart bees or bees from the future or something. <laughs> I mean, you know. Anyway, there you go. <clears throat> all right. So the other category Jonah mentioned um, is the comparison, or are we ranking them or just a free for all? Oh, a free you for can all. Rank do whatever we want. The Stonemeyer <laughs> games, or okay. compare them to other games in the Stonemeyer category. All right. Oh, you... oh, oh, okay. So me first. Um, well, what about the most recent ones that have come out? Why don't we just make it easy? Yeah, yeah. Apiary Expeditions. Kevin? Expeditions. E okay. Melissa? I'm also Expeditions because I love the card play and hand management okay. in Expeditions. I'm probably Apiary on that one. Ooh. Here's the reason why. I didn't love that Expeditions didn't change the board size for player count, and that yeah. really kind of put it down on the list for me. It's a good game, but i like being picky. Worker placement. Yeah, and I really like worker placement. This games, one so. probably is better at the four and five player count than Expeditions, because that one does get long oh, that's true. as you play I the higher I didn't feel players. five players. We played the other night. Five yeah. players went pretty quick. So, yeah. I mean, maybe a little longer than nine minute, 90 minutes, but there was three new players, so two new players, so... That I've never played before. Okay, I think one of the most recent ones that have come out is an is an is a uh, expansion to this game, but we still have to throw it in. Okay. So it was an expansion to Tapestry that came out recently. We just say tapestry, so yeah. a, so Apiary Tapestry. I like Apiary over Tapestry. Oh, Melissa. Oh, Th this one's pretty even, I think, okay. for me, because I like the progression in Tapestry and the cards, the different civilizations. Um. Yeah. So about the same. Just I, I would say the they're same. they're about even. All right, Jonah. I'd probably agree with Melissa. They're about the same, but I have a personal preference. I've got a special spot in my heart for tapestry, Aww. so I'm gonna give it to tapestry, even though okay. I I wouldn't be upset at anyone who said no. Those are probably pretty even, okay. right? Okay. What about um? Again, it was an expansion. It's been out for maybe six months, nine months to a year, okay. but there was a cooperative expansion to viticulture. Oh yeah. Viticulture. So what about apiary? Viticulture. Apiary for me over Viticulture. They're both worker placement games. I like the upgrading of the workers. Like, which one of my big likes in That's Apiary? That's a big deal. People love Viticulture. Oh, this is going to be, they're going to be fans <laughs> on there being like, you hate Viticulture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't hate Viticulture. You just like, I got to choose one. Yeah, I would say I have only actually played Viticulture maybe three or four times. So okay. I'm not a, I don't have a lot of nostalgia or... Fighting experience words. with viticulture <laughs> so i would say i think i like this one better because of the factions and the different mats it seems like there's more variability and i do love variability mm -hmm. in a game yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with apiary on that one 
Again, not that I don't love viticulture. If you ask me to play viticulture when you oh, see me at mm -hmm. a con, I will totally play with you. Yeah. But if you were at my house, I'd bring out apiary before I brought out viticulture. Isn't viticulture a little tight in like some of like the resource management and how that all works? Well, in the spaces. The spaces. And... Whereas apiary didn't feel like that at all. I actually felt it felt good placing your workers out, them upgrading and getting them back, or you know having them hibernate. Mm -hmm. And you're always getting. I, I feel like I'm always getting resources. I'm always doing things. I think there's maybe more flexibility mm -hmm. because in viticulture you do have you know, the process of making the wine. So you kind of need to get things in a certain order mm. if you're going to do the wine making as part of your strategy. Yep. All right, Scythe. So I'm digging. Scythe. <laughs> scythe. That seems like it should yeah. be easy. Scythe, scythe, scythe. scythe is the top for me. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Apiary Red Rising? Oh, uh, Apiary. Red Rising is probably near the bottom of my, okay. of my list. See, I like Red Rising, but I would put it as a different category okay. of game. Like, sure. it's... It's, not it's even a smaller this... game. It's not right. quite your Euro, yeah. like, big box game, yeah. so. Okay. All right, and then the big one. Wingspan. Wingspan. It's, it <laughs> has to be. I love Wingspan. I think they did such a good job yeah. with uh, Wingspan Asia, I believe, which is their two-player version of it. Um, I, I just, man, they did a good job with that game. I love it. Now, I'm not trying to diss Apiary. I would, I would play this game. Like, it's fine. But, but, but I just yeah. love Wingspan. Yeah. Are you Wingspan? <sighs> oh, oh. Uh-oh. I... This is shocking to me. I didn't <laughs> assume we would Anyone have... Would... I didn't assume we'd have lots of dialogue about this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I am not a Wingspan lover. Oh. Okay. I'm not it's a Wingspan hater. Okay. okay. I am it kind of a like... Wingspan neutral. Okay. Okay. So you're putting this about the same level then? Yeah, I would probably put this okay. about the same. I would wow. play either game. See, I would have said like before Melissa just said I was saying, oh, Wingspan is high at the top, and then you have some of those like good games like Apiary, Tapestry. They're like, and we have like some differing opinions, and you have some lower, maybe like Euphoria. Maybe some people's aren't like the favorite, so there's a maybe the bottom of the Stonemire ranks. Um, so I would just assume that Apiary was like. Close to the top, but not like beaten yeah. outside the wingspan. I, I would agree. I mean, it's middle top, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not lower than that. It's middle to the top. Okay. It's a good game. Uh, I like that it plays one to five players. That's uh, really cool. And I like that you can play it kind of fast at five players. It's really not going to take you three hours or right. two and a half. Yep, I mean, yep. you can get done in an hour and a half yep. with seasoned players who have played before, stuff like that. So yep. I think it's cool. So, any other final thoughts? Final I mean, thoughts. we covered a lot of things with that. I think yeah. those kind of rankings we, kind of helped with that. I did. I, I think it's easy to get to the table. We sort of maybe touched on that. Easy to get to the table, and I think people can pick it up easy as well. So, yeah. not only this like ease of setup, but like it's like done. You're you're ready to go. Put a worker out or retrieve your workers. Pretty simple for like mechanic wise. Yeah, I was surprised in the games I played. I did not do that retrieval mechanic As very much. often. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of have to set up your board to have a lot of those green tiles mm -hmm. to then try to make use of it. But I know once or twice where I was like, okay, I'm going to retrieve them next time so I can activate all these. But then someone bumps my thing and it comes back to me but and you, now it's like, you oh, choose. I know, you can choose yeah. to put it down below in, in your the landing like, area. Yeah, landing bay. But I, I was surprised that I didn't use that mm -hmm. as much, and so those green tiles yeah. weren't quite as powerful. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've got any closing thoughts. I think that if you haven't played it yet, you should go grab the game and you should try it. If you have played it already and you're watching this video, what you should do is leave a comment below and tell us your thoughts on what we said, or just your thoughts on the game in general. And uh, you should join us next time for our next viewpoints on whatever game that we get to the table next. Thanks for watching.